Have you seen Maggie? Oh, hi, everybody. I'm Maggie. Welcome to Crazy Quilt. Oh, hi, Maggie. Whew. Thank goodness you're here. What's wrong, Jackson? Oh, there's a strange new animal in the backyard. There is? What does it look like? Oh, it's the meanest, nastiest creature in the world. Oh, is it a lion? No. A bear? No. It's a dinosaur. A dinosaur? Yeah. But, Jackson, you know that dinosaurs aren't alive anymore. Oh, oh yeah, I knew that. Mm -hmm. And anyhow, we both know the story of the meanest, nastiest creature in the world. Oh, that's right. Let's tell the story today and do the crafts. Good idea, Jackson, but um, what about the strange animal outside? Oh, um, uh, he can listen to the story, too. Dinosaur. Let's make an iguanodon. Oh, an iguanodon. Yeah. I've got a great big water bottle that I painted green. Oh, How about yeah. that for the that body? That looks good. Of course, we don't really know what color dinosaurs were, but green is good. Green sounds like a good color to me, too. And for the head, I've got a cup that I painted green, and I smooshed down one end oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, smooshing is good, too. Now, I think iguanodons had pretty long necks, didn't they? Because they were pretty tall. Yeah, they were tall and big. Do you know how big they were? Oh, you know what, Maggie? They were as big as a bus. Yeah. That is pretty big. Yeah, but I don't think you'd want to get inside one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Mm. Okay, we just put a, a bit of a uh, toilet paper roll on top of the bottle. Okay, and that's then we the take neck, our, right? our smooshy yeah. head and we put that on the front like that. That looks good. And we'll just tape it to hold on. Maybe a couple of pieces of tape just to yeah, be Yeah, you safe. don't want a guanodon head to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I don't think there'd be much danger of getting inside an iguanodon, because they didn't eat people. Oh, or well, that's just as well. They didn't even eat animals. <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> no, they, they just ate plants. Yeah. Right, let's yeah. put some stickers on for eyes. They might eat, like, leaves and, and, and maybe grasses and stuff. Mm -hmm, exactly. We've got stickers for eyes. Right. And then, actually, can you hold on to the iguanodon come for here, me? Come here, Probably kid. the first time in history that a raccoon has held on to an iguanodon. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They'd I've... be hard to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting smaller stickers on. Oh, for the to... middle of the eye. Yeah, and then I'll even use my marker and give her little dots in the middle of her eyes like yeah. that. Nice. All right. Um, now, let's see. I, I think we could give her some eyebrows. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got yeah. a fuzzy pipe cleaner that I just kind of bent into a little curvy shape. And I'll just dip it it's in some green one too. glue and put it right there. Give her a bit of expression. And while the glue is drying, I'll put on some tape. Yeah, tape's a good way to hold things while the glue is drying. Right. There we go. That gives her a bit of shape. I kind of like that. I think she could use hmm, some arms. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because sure. even if it's just eating plants, it's got to find a way to grab All them. All right. Well, I've got some nice, soft sponge, and I'm going to cut out some claws. So I'm just going to cut a couple of triangles out like that. Uh -huh. Now, of course, iguanodons have a very interesting kind of thing on their their hands, I guess we could call them. Yeah, they have a kind of a, a thummy thing. That's right, this sort of spike. And I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and just stick it in the top like that. You know, when they first found iguanodon bones, they didn't know where the spike went. They tried it on their head. They tried it all <laughs> over the place. Like getting a jigsaw puzzle with, with no picture. Uh-huh. <laughs> And let's put some tape on this, on the back, and then we'll put some glue on 
just to hold it while it's dry. All right, like get that glue that. on the iguanodon. Well, we'll put it just where the bottle has a little curve. That's a pretty good place for an arm. And then we better do that on the other side, too. Jackson, do you know what they call the people who figured out all about dinosaurs? I do. It's a big word, though. What is it? Are you ready? I'm ready. Paleontologist. Paleontologist. Yeah, it sounds like alientologist, but that <laughs> would be someone who studies aliens, I think. I, I guess. Oh, let's take a look. Well, that looks pretty fierce. Yeah. Now, let's turn her this way. Okay, and okay. then Hello. you can hold on to her there, because okay. I'm going to add okay. a tail. And I've got a paper cone. We'll put a bit of glue all around the edges and stick that on right near the bottom of the bottle. Okay. Careful, don't get glue on you, Grit Jackson. Okay, I'll be careful. And I'll put a bit of tape to hold the tail on while the glue is drying. I wonder if dinosaurs were ever in a hurry for their glue to dry. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have a lot of time, I think, because they lived like millions of years ago. They did in the Mesozoic era. Yeah, 200, about 210 or 15 million years ago, I think. Yeah. More time than I can figure out. Okay, <laughs> More time than I can count, I'll tell you. Okay, can you hold on to her? Hold her on a bit higher so you don't run okay, into the tail. There we okay, go. There we go. For her legs, I've taken some toilet paper rolls and I cut out a section on each of them. And I'm going to give her some toes oh, because yeah. uh, these were pretty fast dinosaurs. So she needs some toes to run with. I'm just going to cut a few slits and bend them up like toes. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, there we go. Just bend them up. And we'll do that on the other side. Just like that. Uh, how many toes do I have? One, two, three. One, two. Hey, Maggie. Ah, three. Mm -hmm. How did you ever get those toilet paper rolls to line up like that? Oh, I had to measure very carefully to make sure they were the same height. Otherwise, our iguanodon would stand a little Oh, uh, yeah, it, it'd be the leaning iguanodon <laughs> of the Mesozoic era. <laughs> we put some glue on the toilet paper rolls for the legs. And now we put her on top so she'll be really nice and tall. And we let her dry, and then she'll be ready to roam the world. Long, long ago, when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, there was a young dinosaur named Iguanodon Donna. This is Iguanodon Donna. Iguanodon Donna's favorite breakfast food is... <laughs> her favorite lunch food is... Ferns! And for dinner, her absolute favorite is... Ferns! Other dinosaurs like to eat tall pine trees. Ew, blicky! Or delicious prickly plants. Stinky! Or bushy bush. Yuck! But not Iguanodon Donna! One day, she was walking in the forest when she heard a terrible noise. Uh-oh. What is that? I'm going to go hide behind a feather tree. Maggie, we have to make a feather tree. Right, and we have to make a pepper tree and a stegosaurus. Let's make the stegosaurus first. Oh, yeah, they're really big. They are as big as a train car. Wow. So I've got a really big juice bottle this time to work with. And I've got a party hat. <laughs> oh, boy, let's have a party. See how cute that is? I just covered it with construction paper. If you don't have a party hat, you just have to make a cone out of Bristol board or something like that. And we're going to tape that on for the tail. Jackson, can you hold the stegosaurus body? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Don't go anywhere, Miss Stegosaurus. All right. We're just going to put the tape on like that to hold her in place. They had really big tails, but you know what? They had really little heads. They had <laughs> very small brains. So I've got a little paper cone for the head. As big as a train with a very small brain. Oh! <laughs> I wonder if they liked poetry. Mm. So much we don't know about dinosaurs. There we go. We've got a pointy bit at each end. Mm. 
Now, we're going to put some eyes on. Do you want to hold her steady for me? Okay, okay. Okay, actually, Take let's just rotate her there. there. That's Take kind of a nice look. Easy. Okay, let's use some beads for the eyes here. Because she needs to be able to find the plants that she wants to eat. Right, right. Just like the iguanodon, stegosauruses didn't eat meat. They just ate nice ferns and grasses and all sorts of little bushes, that kind of thing. But you know, they stegosaurus and iguanodons wouldn't have really known each other in real life. No, that's right. They lived in slightly different eras. Yeah, didn't like they? A, about 50 million years. <laughs> <laughs> Just slightly. <laughs> well, what's 50 million years between friends? Yeah, well, I think it's um hmm. It's a long time. A long time. Yeah. <laughs> How have you been? I haven't seen you in a few million <laughs> years. <laughs> I'm using some pasta for her eyebrows. You don't look a you don't look a, a, a century older. <laughs> <laughs> now, the one thing that I always recognize about stegosauruses is the special things that they have on their back. Right. And I started cutting it out. They've got these amazing plates that well, are sort of like diamond shapes or squares on their sides. That and kind they of look like up. home base or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I took a big piece of Bristol board and I folded it in half and I cut them out. If you want to get the shapes exactly the way you want them, you could draw the lines on first. Oh, there's hardly any room to cut it because she's so well, big. Well, when you're making something as big as a train, you can't expect a whole lot of extra room. No. So I'm going to cut out a slightly smaller plate. Actually, that's what they called them, I think, oh, the sort of plate. armor that they had, hmm. plates. And at the very back, yeah. they had a sort of spiky bit for a tail. Is that bristle board hard to cut, Maggie? It's a bit hard. You probably might need some help from a grown-up. Yeah. All right, now we're just going to lay it over like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll just make sure that the skinny end sticks through her eyes, just not through her eyes, but between no, her but eyes, between I want to say. Eyes, amongst the eyes. That's right. <laughs> and then all along the back, and then some more here. I think I'll use a tape loop just to hold it in place. Right. All right. Mm, I and think I'm kind of bumping that. Oh, that oh, oh, here. Oh, get out of the part. way. Oh, we need a dinosaur size craft table. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just going to bend all these plates up so they stand up. And they'll look like they're really good protection for her, which is what I think they were for. I think they also think they might have helped keep her cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a big fan or mm. just something to kind of take the heat off. That's right. Can you hold on to her tail, do you think? Just a second here. Here, let's try it this way. That might help. Here you go. Mm. You just hold on. Yeah. All right. Don't run away, dinosaur. Yeah. We're going to give her some legs. I've got some leg shapes all cut out. Great big legs for the back. And we'll tape loop those on back here just so that they touch the top of the table. And small legs whoops, for the front. And we'll tape loop that on as well. I don't think that one should go on this side. Okay. They look like they're going forward. So we need one here, another small leg right at the front, and then another big leg for the back. There we Boy. go. She doesn't look too fierce, does she? Eh, not too scary. Hey, Maggie, I know what we need to make one of the trees. What? Feathers! Oh, great! <laughs> for you, the feather tree. You know, I've never seen a feather tree, have you? No. But they had all kinds of strange and different plants back when the dinosaurs lived. Yeah. Maybe they had feather trees. Maybe so. This is just a feather duster, right? The kind that you use to dust delicate things in the house? Yeah, I was tidying up in my tree, you know. Mm. Sometimes I get a lot of dust in oh, my tree. Oh, me too. Mm -hmm. I've got a paper towel roll that I covered in construction paper and a piece of con the same construction paper that I fringed so it kind of looks like feathers, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then I'm just going to wrap it around like that and tape it. I'm not even worrying about wrapping it really neatly because I want the feathers to show all over yeah, the place. Yeah, a feather tree might be kind of messy for all we know. Yeah. 
And okay, we'll just so put some tape there. Oh, yeah, you're going to take that I took a little more tape than I needed on. there. Right. So I'm leaving the fringy part loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, da 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 a feather tree! Yay, for the feather tree! Hmm. I'm just going to open up the feather duster a little bit to make it full and luxurious. Right, like maybe it's a blooming feather tree or Ooh, something. Ooh, yeah. that's really nice. Now, I think we need another kind of tree. Hmm. A pepper tree. A pepper tree? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I don't know what that would be like. Well, look what I brought in from the dining room. <laughs> This the is a pepper mill. Yeah, pepper mill. It's the kind that you turn and the pepper comes out the bottom. Yeah. Now make sure that you're allowed to borrow this, okay? Make sure you're not taking it at supper time when somebody wants some pepper yeah, on their where's food. Where's the pepper? Where's the pepper? I can't right. find it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you can decorate it with just putting some pipe cleaners on. I'm going to curl this one by wrapping it around my glue stick. You mm -hmm. can wrap it around a pencil or whatever. It's yeah. kind of curly and fun. No, it looks like um, kind of sort of like a, a piece of noodle or something. Uh -huh. And you can just tape it on. You don't want to glue it because somebody might still want to use it for a pepper mill in, in fact, real life. In they probably will, I yeah. think. Yeah. And you can take a whole bunch of these curly things and tie them together and then you could even just tie it on the top where the little silvery handle is. Mm. And so it sticks out like that. When pepper trees ruled the world. While Iguanodon Donna was hiding behind the feather tree, another dinosaur was walking in the forest. It was Stegosaurus Doris. Now, Stegosaurus Doris was a lot like Iguanodon Donna. She had a favorite food, too. Her favorite food was mm, broccoli. For breakfast, she liked to eat Broccoli. For lunch, she liked to eat mm, broccoli. And for dinner, she liked to eat yum, 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 broccoli. Now, Stegosaurus Doris was walking in the forest the same time as Iguanodon Donna, and she heard a terrible noise, too. Uh oh, oh what, what's that noise? Yikes, yikes, yikes. I better hide behind the pepper tree. So Iguanodon Donna hid behind the feather tree, and Stegosaurus Doris hid behind the pepper tree. Oh, oh, these feathers are really ticklish. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Oh, oh, the peppers in this tree are starting to itch my nose. I think I'm going to sneeze. Ah, 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 Wow, oh, that was really scary. I've never seen anything like that before. I wonder what it was. Maybe one of the old dinosaurs knows. I'll go ask Triceratops Pops. Wow, that was really scary. I've never seen anything like that before. Maybe one of the old dinosaurs knows. I know. I'll go ask Triceratops Pops. Oh, Maggie, how are we going to make Triceratops Pops? May I borrow your baseball cap? Huh? <laughs> Jackson, have you got that hat yet? Oh, yeah, Maggie, I've got it. Great. We're going to use it to turn you into a dinosaur. Me into a dinosaur? In a, <laughs> into a triceratops. Oh, yeah, yeah, a triceratops. Hmm. You remember which one that is? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the one that's got the third of three horns. Right. And it was really big, you know. It was? Yeah, really big. As, as big as a train. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty big. Okay, now I'm just going to put the hat back <laughs> on. <laughs> I can't see anything. Yeah, just sliding off. There we go. Okay. Now, it's great that you have it on backwards. That's just the way we want it because the bill is going to be the collar. You know how they had that big ruff that stood up around the yeah, back of their neck? Yeah, it looked like they were like kind that? of dressed up. That's mm -hmm. right. So I'm going to take a sort of vaguely triangular piece of felt. It's just sort of rounded a little bit. Kind of like a triangle with circles on the edges. Right. And I'm going to put it on your hat and measure where I want to put the horns. Okay. So we Be have careful a... careful not to poke me. No, no, no. I'm being very gentle because I wouldn't want to hurt you. Just to give me a little bit of an idea of where okay. to put them. And now I'm going to use some paper cups and glue them on. They, they look like Triceratops horns. They do. And we'll put them on in a triangle. Hmm. Because, you know, the word triceratops means... Oh, yeah, it sounds like a 
triangle. It yeah. does, because that means that it's got three horns, and a triangle means it's got three corners. Hey, wait a minute. Uh -huh. What about a, a tricycle? Oh, what does a tricycle have? Hmm. Three, three wheels. wheels. That's yeah. right. That's yeah, and what... a popsicle has a... Mm, where's my hat? Oh, oh, did it oh, fall down? Can you get minute, it? Just a second. Okay. <laughs> yep. So now we're gluing them on, and we'll have to let it dry a little bit because we want it to be nice and firm. While it's drying, though, I'm going to pull out another one that I made in advance. We'll surprise Jackson when he comes back with his hat. Oh, boy. Have you got it? Yeah, yeah. It was down be between all those things. It was hard to get. Oh. <laughs> I did another one, Jackson. In advance. Oh, you are fast. <laughs> well, I wanted to <laughs> go it away nice for a dry. minute and everything's changed. <laughs> now I'm going to use some big safety pins and I'm going to pin it back where I measured it. So this one goes down on the elastic that was at the front. Boy, I'm glad you're not doing that on my head. No, <laughs> you really wouldn't want to do it while someone was wearing the hat just in case they got poked. Right, that right. That wouldn't be very comfortable at all. The nice thing about this craft, too, is you can do it, and when you're tired of it, you can just take it off your hat, and it'll be as good as new. So it would be a really nice costume to wear sometime. Uh, I guess, Maggie, it might be a kind of, I might be kind of nervous with those pins, you know. Yeah, you might want to get a grown-up to help with that part yeah, for sure, because yeah. they could be a bit pokey. Yeah, I don't like pokey pins. Right, so I'm working pretty carefully just to make sure I don't poke myself. Yeah. And sometimes the baseball hat can be a bit stiff. So have to work a little hard. There, got it on. Okay. We're ready to see if you look like a Triceratops. Ooh, yes, Jackson. Oh. I'm very impressed. Oh, yeah. See if you can do a Triceratops roar. Roar! So Iguanodon Donna went to ask Triceratops Pops, the old dinosaur, if he knew what the strange new creature in the forest was. It was large with these funny-looking plates on its back. Hmm. Did it have a large tail? A huge tail. The longest one I've ever seen. It must have been a million miles long. And it had those plates on it. This was the meanest, nastiest creature in the world. All dinosaurs might look mean and nasty, but remember, you're a dinosaur too. You probably look mean and nasty to it. Not me. I'm the friendliest dinosaur in the world. Well, why don't you show the other dinosaur how friendly you are? Why don't you bring it some food? Food? Okay, I'll bring it, um, broccoli. I hate broccoli. Thanks, Pops. Bye. While Iguanodon Donna was looking for some broccoli, Stegosaurus Doris went to talk to Triceratops Pops about the creatures she saw. Oh. It was large and stood on two feet. Hmm. Did it have sharp claws? Oh, huge claws, especially at the thumb. This was the meanest, nastiest creature in the world. Oh, all dinosaurs might look mean and nasty, but remember, you're a dinosaur too. You probably looked mean and nasty to it. Oh, not me. I'm the friendliest dinosaur in the world. Well, why don't you show the other dinosaur how friendly you are? Why don't you bring it some food? Food? Okay, I'll bring it uh, uh, ferns. I hate ferns. Thanks, Pops. Bye. So Iguanodon Donna and Stegosaurus Doris headed off into the forest with their food. Oh, I'm scared. I'm too scared to look. I'm going to walk backwards so I don't have to see the creature. Oh, I'm scared. I'm too scared to look. I'm, I'm going to walk backwards so I don't have to see the creature. Oh, oh I, I think, think I, I hear footsteps. footsteps. I better see who's there. dropped her broccoli and hid behind the feather tree, and Doris dropped her ferns and hid behind the pepper tree. And just then, 
They heard a sound. Oh no, what's that? It's getting closer. Oh, look at this. Someone dropped some sweet looking ferns. And here's some delicious looking broccoli. Great, I'll just put some yummy red swamp slime on it and have a meal. Hey, that was my broccoli. Hey, those, those were my ferns. Well then, why don't you two join me? Okay, but can I have the ferns? I hate broccoli, but I love ferns. Oh, can I have the broccoli? I hate ferns, but I love broccoli. Oh, of course. So, Iguanodon Donna and Stegosaurus Doris sat down and ate with Triceratops Pops. And soon they were all friends. What's that red sauce you're putting on the food, Pops? Oh, it makes everything taste great. You should try it. Mm. Hey, this is terrific. Yeah, I love this. I'm going to put it on everything. Me too. What's it called? Oh, it's yummy red swamp slime, but you can call it ketchup. Ketchup? Jackson, is that where ketchup comes from? <laughs> I don't know, Maggie, but it's good on everything. I gotta take some to the squirrel outside. Squirrel? I, I thought the animal outside was mean and nasty. <laughs> oh, Jackson. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next time on Crazy Quill. Bye. Ketchup? Yeah, it's for squirrel. the squirrels. Squirrels might like ketchup. I think they they like ketchup. Like to make the broccoli, we took a twig and stuck on lots of bits of old sponge that we weren't going to use anymore. Just ripped up in any old shape, almost like a tree. Yeah, it looks good, Maggie. Almost good enough to eat. Yeah, but I think it'd be a bit too chewy. <laughs> and to make the ferns, I took a piece of construction paper, folded it over, and then cut out all the little leaves in different designs. And when I opened it up, it was all put together. And oh. then they come out in different shapes. Oh, yeah, and because you folded it, you got the same shape on each side. Exactly. You could make all kinds of vegetables this way, whatever your favorite vegetable is. Oh, you know what is. I like to make?